What's up guys, CJ here and welcome back to another all new Hybrid Network Deadpool 2 video, breaking down all of the cameos and easter eggs you might have missed in the movie. Deadpool as a character is always chock full of references and nods in his bag of one-liners and quips, and the first Deadpool film absolutely lived up to that expectation, with a truckload of references to the X-Men, the character's history, and yes, Hugh Jackman. Deadpool 2 picks up right where the first one left off with a ton of cool cameos and easter eggs. We've gotten a pretty good rundown on these references from what we personally saw in the movie, as well as some more behind the scenes information from other sources. Let's start with the cameos and start with one right off the top. When Cable arrives in our time, it's in a kind of rustic rural area, and he comes across two farmers having a conversation about, uh, bathroom hygiene? One of these farmers is Alan Tudyk, who's easier to spot, but the other, in extremely heavy makeup and doing his best Matthew McConaughey, is Matt Damon, who's also almost unrecognizable in this small role. In that same vein, maybe the biggest cameo in the movie is also the briefest. There was active speculation and fan theories running rampant after people noticed there seemed to be an invisible character in the film. The verdict? Yep, the movie does feature an invisible mutant with a twist. Vanisher, aka Telford Porter, is actually played by none other than Brad Pitt. This is revealed when Vanisher is accidentally fatally electrocuted and he becomes visible very, very briefly. It is remarkably short, and Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick told Fandango it was shot in seven minutes. Ryan Reynolds also later revealed to Collider it's actually only eight frames in the film. And the best part? Pitt did it all for a cup of coffee. In my personal favorite cameo, we actually see the entire main X-Men team from X-Men Apocalypse during this movie, and it's not related to the plot in any way, but it comes as a result of Deadpool moving into the X-Mansion as an X-Men trainee. While he's looking for the other X-Men in the mansion, a little reference to the joke from last film about not being able to afford them, we see that the main team is gathered in a room, kind of quietly almost avoiding Deadpool, and for their sake, Beast shuts the door before Wade sees them. In a flashback to the future, a little oxymoron there, we see the deaths of Cable's wife and child at the hands of a grown-up Russell Collins, aka Firefist. The actor playing the older Collins is actually stuntman and actor Sala Baker, who you might have seen last year as hulking goon King in an episode of Iron Fist. We also got a couple of major mutant appearances in the film. The X-Force team is a cool lineup featuring characters like Shatterstar, another Rob Liefeld creation, and Zeitgeist, played by Bill Skarsgård, aka Pennywise. But beyond those, we got two major villain appearances as well. First, we see Black Tom Cassidy, played by Jack Kesey, who's another inmate in the Icebox, a prison for mutants that Deadpool and Firefist wind up in. Later, we also see Juggernaut, another inmate at the Icebox, and a hulking CGI monstrosity who gives the heroes a hell of a fight. That's not all, though. Juggs is voiced by none other than Ryan Reynolds himself. In the comics, Cassidy is a supervillain and criminal with the ability to project energy out of organic matter. Juggernaut, well, you know, he speaks for himself. Both being in the film was interesting as they're often portrayed as a criminal duo in the comics. And this is unconfirmed, but in that prison scene, we see a pale mutant with long blonde hair, who many are thinking could actually be longtime X-Men villain Omega Red. And of course, the post credit scene that has everyone talking, where we get to see Wade kill his former selves. First Deadpool in X-Men Origins Wolverine, and then Ryan Reynolds immediately after the actor read and approved the Green Lantern script. But that hilarious post credit scene was almost just a little bit longer and a lot darker. Originally, they planned to have Deadpool take the device all the way back to Germany in the late 1800s. There, we find Deadpool in a nursery looking conflicted and psyching himself up to do something, which we find out is strangling baby Hitler. And while the post credit scene we got is getting a lot of credit, rightfully, there was another option that we didn't get that personally I find just as funny. The original plan, according to Reese and Warnick, was to return to the X-Force recruitment gag with tons of new characters coming in. This was going to include Chris Evans, who comes into the interview acting like Captain America, only to be called out by Deadpool for actually being the Human Torch, to which Chris would respond, we all have our pasts. Obviously, this is a little reference to Evans' role as Johnny Storm in 2004's Fantastic Four and Rise of the Silver Surfer, and while they ultimately decided the time travel idea was funny, we may never know if Marvel would have allowed this to happen. Let me know what you thought of all these cameos and easter eggs in the comment section down below, and of course, if there are any we missed, feel free to tell us about them. That's gonna do it for me here, though. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like if you like what you saw, subscribe for more great content every single day, and consider turning on your notifications to be alerted every time we upload a new video. Signing off, this is CJ, and I'll see you next time.